here with a superb time, 36 seconds faster than the opposition. At these tough economic times, Tim might not have rivals such as Gareth McHale and Eugene Donnelly to race with this weekend. But Tim is here to enjoy this great rally, and enjoying it he is with Paul Kiley beside him as he commands an impressive 1 minute 22.3 second lead after three stages. Inside Kevin Barrett's S11 Subaru, we see just how difficult those conditions are. Into five right, 16. Pools of water from the heavy rain lie in places, but Kevin and co-driver Sean Mullally have made a good start in the Triton Shower Subaru. Second fastest on stage one, and third fastest here on stage two, the Brennan's bred Chantallo stage. One left and three right Titan, four right, 40. Three left maybe continues, and long three right narrows, 100. Stage three, the Pat Kelly plumbing and heating Tyquin test. And Kevin is second fastest, 17 seconds slower than Tim McNulty. Galway is a warm-up for Kevin's national championship campaign. And although he seems unlikely to challenge Tim at present, second place on an international would be a significant result for the popular Maynooth driver. For Derek McGarrity, things start well in his newly acquired ex Gwyndaf Evans Group N Evo 10. He's fastest in Group N by two seconds on the opener, despite a misted windscreen, but loses a little time on the second Chantalo stage. However, for car number three, stage number three is as far as it goes, as a gearbox problem causes its retirement. Alan Ring dropped those two seconds to Derek on the opener, but was nine seconds faster on stage two. And by stage three, the monster joinery Evo 9 is third overall, with a group end lead of over 40 seconds. Behind Alan on the road is Tommy Doyle in his front-wheel drive Renault Clio R3, despite the odd moment like this on the bumpy straights. He's 30 seconds back from Ring, in a fine fourth overall. Young Fermanagh driver Willie Mavitti is learning his new Lancer Evo 9 and is taking time to get used to the new car in ninth. But Sam Moffat is now in his second season with Evo Par. He's currently sixth overall and third in Group N. He's just one second behind Galway's Ross Ford on his second outing in a Group N car, which has some interesting backing from a local councillor. He's having a very interesting time with a sticking throttle in the loop. Martin Donnelly and his Evo and Liam Egan, struggling with a puncture here, have travelled all the way from the USA to compete on the Galway International. Tom White has travelled over from County Wexford to compete and is travelling well down the stages in 10th place. But things aren't so good for local driver Liam Higgins, who has John Connolly tailing him on stage one. On stage two, it's a tale of woe for Liam, as his rally is ended by one of those infamous dry stone walls. Yeah, it's going well. I mean, you know, we're keeping the concentration up. We're, we're not absolutely flat out, but it's, uh, we're not far off it, and, and we're just keeping the pressure on, you know. You, it's a long way to the finish line. You can't take anything for granted, you know. You know, I like these conditions. Um, Galway's always like this, so that's what we expect when we come down. So it makes tyre choice a bit easier. It's full wets, and that's it, you know. Kevin really leaks the S11 Impreza over the Ballyfar jumps. Kevin is content to set his own pace and keep the Triton Shire's car out of trouble at this stage. Three right and five left. Eighteen. Middle over crest, one hundred. Over crest, five left. He can't afford to back off too much though as Alan Ring is pushing his Group N Evo and it's critical to keep the concentration levels and the reaction times at their optimum as the changing surfaces can drag you into the ditch in an instant. 40, one right maybe, tight of two right, 100. Kevin Barrett is having to cope like the rest of them with horrendous conditions. Tim is always quick from the world go, but Kevin is quite happy with his pace so far. Alan Ring is also very happy with his pace, third overall in extending his Group N lead to 1 minute 22 seconds, but it hasn't been drama free. He had a puncture in stage 4 and a rear diff nearly gave up in stage 6. Next up is the 2 litre Clio of Tommy Doyle, now just a minute back from Alan despite visibility issues. 
Here on stage four, Ross Ford is second fastest overall, just seven seconds slower than Tim McNulty. He's now fifth overall and second in Group N. For Sam Moffat, however, this puncture on stage four means he's now 40 seconds behind Ross in sixth place. William Mifferty is next in the leaderboard, but over two minutes behind Sam, and David Quigley just one second behind him in eighth. Tom White is 16 seconds further back in ninth, whilst Brian O'Keefe completes the top ten as the crews head out for the final loop of the day. Join us for more of the Safety Direct Galway International Rally action after the break. Back to a wet Galway International Rally. The spectators battle the elements to catch the action as the crews battle through the water towards the end of the first day. Paul Curley ends the day in 10th spot, 27 seconds behind the Subaru of Brian O'Keefe. Tom White is 8th and set to move up to 7th on this loop despite this overshoot on the penultimate test of the day. Tom's progress is at the expense of Willie Mavitti who retires with engine problems and David Quigley who slips behind in the slippery conditions. Also slipping down in this loop are Ross Ford and Robbie Ward, a puncture in the final day's test costing them four minutes and dropping them to six. We're dropped down I think to sixth and uh, third overall in group end, I think. Yeah, it was hard now today seeing as we were really scrabbling to hold on to the lads today and we were actually leading the local crews by uh, 14 seconds going into the last stage so we were really hoping to hang on, hang on till tomorrow so a um, bit disappointed but I'm sure tomorrow is a whole another day. Sam Moffat is now fifth, and just six seconds behind Tommy Doyle, who's had to tackle the final test without power steering, which made the 250 horsepower front wheel drive Clio a real handful. Alan Ring is a fine third, just 33 seconds off second, and now trading times with Kevin Barrett. Two left over bump 16, middle over crest, and one left, 150. As Kevin shows, at times it's a guessing game, as over small crests can lie pools of standing water, which make aquaplaning a very real possibility. Long two right, 40. One left, 40. Kevin's Triton Shar Subaru has run faultlessly all day. His team is led by two times Galway winner Kenny McKinstry, who helps advise on tyre choice. Kevin is trying a new Pirelli winter tyre over the final loop. Kevin Barrett clipped a few corners and bent a rim. Tim is on a different pace, but Kevin is happy to get some mileage in before the national championship begins. Tim McNulty and Paul Kiley, a three times Galway winning co-driver, will end the day with a fabulous lead of 3 minutes 24 seconds. There's a lot of great tarmac championship rounds, but Galway is one that Tim has always particularly enjoyed. Tim McNulty has been fastest in all of the nine stages in the first day of the Safety Direct Galway International Rally. And the second day, six stages are in the Hedford area. McNulty has driven impeccably so far. With a lead of three minutes, he concedes seven seconds on the opening Kenny Galway Kokuna's test. But here on stage 11, the Clayton Hotel Kilbeg stage, he sets another fastest time. At times the Subaru is touching 130 miles per hour on the saturated side roads. By service, his lead is now 3 minutes 41 seconds. And on the team this weekend is four times winner Eugene Donnelly, who's helping out with the mud notes, or more precisely, the water notes. Tim is at a problem with the brake discs warping. Kevin Barrett was wide awake this morning in the Triton Shard Subaru as he sets his first fastest time of the rally. The more heavily cut Pirelli winter tyres are dispersing the water better of the saturated Kilcuna stage. On the Kilbeg test, he's second fastest, and on the third Green Force Fuels Carolistron stage, he's third fastest. Kevin is now using Pirelli winter tyres. It's a balance today. Do you clear the water or get a tyre for the fast stuff? He took a gamble on the winter tyres and it certainly has worked out on the first one. 
Alan Ring has been trying hard in the morning stages as he commits on the fast jumps and crests of the Kilbeg stage near Hadford. He is just one second slower than Tim on the opener and one second slower than Kevin Barrett on the Kilbeg stage. Okay. Left one over crest, good 90. Left three at the wall, 30. Right two, go to 100. The monster joinery car is carving through the floods and Alan is within striking distance if anything happens to Kevin Barrett ahead. Still, this has been one of the Killarney driver's best ever runs, taking third place from stage two and holding a commanding group end lead. The water has been one of the talking points today and the morning hasn't been without its moments. Yeah, the first one wasn't too bad. The last one, we had, uh, we've been told about the water. And in the middle of the water, the car turned 90 degrees. We damn near, excuse my French, put it in the wall. But, you know, we, we got away with it, but it was the lapse of the God. We very nearly put it off in the water. Tommy Doyle hasn't the luxury of four-wheel drive in these conditions, which makes his fourth place all the more creditable. And he actually increases his lead over fifth place, Sam Moffat. Sam had a good start to the morning, but on the third Cutter Lustrum test, the evil has developed a small mechanical problem. Ross Ford, however, has had a clean run, but yesterday's puncture has cost him dearly. Tom White is also steadily improving in seventh, with Brian O'Keefe eighth. Whilst David Quigley at ninth loses two minutes with a puncture on the third test. And his civic rival Paul Curley has closed up somewhat in 10th place as the crews tackle the final movement. And in 13th are Paul McHugh and Ashley Grimes. David Carney and Ray Fitzpatrick are 12th despite an engine which wouldn't rev fully. USA visitor Martin Donnelly was unfortunate to retire on the final loop. His friend Liam Egan and Graham Coppinger took a fine 11. Paul Curley and Jason Ulrenshaw are 10th and 1st in Class 2 with Brian O'Keefe and Donoghue Callahan 9th. David Quigley and Des Sherlock a fabulous 8th and 1st in Class 1. Tom White and Richard Cleary have a drama-free weekend to record 7th. But Ross Ford and Robbie Ward have had their dramas this weekend in 6th, as is 5th place Sam Moffat who limps to the finish with transmission maladies. No such troubles for Tommy Doyle in a fine 4th place with the Art Week Cleo. Alan Ring and Adrian DC have driven swiftly from the start on this fabulous event. Despite the wintry conditions, Galway Motor Club have made every one of the 15 stages run. A well-run event and a great run for Alan this weekend. Alan Ring is more than happy with third overall and first in Group N. It's the best he could have hoped for against the WRC cars. He hopes to contest the rest of the series. Kevin Barrett and co-driver Sean Mullally thread their Subaru over the narrow switchbacks at high speed. Even on these final stages, there are hazards to be heeded. And although Kevin wasn't in the race with Tim this weekend, his second overall finish is still a great credit for a competitor. He also puts a lot back into the sport. And he's obviously pleased with his final position. Absolutely thrilled with second overall. I know people say, like, oh, that there's only two WRC cars in it, but with the conditions that are out there, believe me, we're more than happy to be here. But for Tim McNulty and Paul Kiley, 14 fastest times out of 15 stages and a winning margin of 4 minutes 16 seconds illustrates their dominance this weekend. Tim has shown speed and maturity, and if his usual sparring partners return at the Circuit of Ireland, they will find him a tough challenge. Tim has braved the conditions, driven impeccably, and won the 